righty. We are back. A few days off. I know, I got to get in the camera here. Hold on. Shay Shay, I see you, girl. <laughs> Shay Shay's here. Shay Shay 3178. Pearl Spy is here. Uh, let me go look over here. Uh, look over here on this other side. Let me move this thing around here. Let me get it. Let me get in camera shot. Camera shot. <sighs> Hannah Speaks is here. She will be debuting. Her pilot show will be this week. Hannah Speaks. She is here. Hannah Speaks will be here this week. Shay Shay. Good to see you here again, my friend. Leslie Rome. Okay, today I wanted to start my week off with this very generous and beautiful, kind person to tell her story. So, you know what happens next. Let's do this. And let's get her in here and let's um, let's learn a little bit more about her and her book. Let's do this. I have no idea what just happened, but something happened. I don't know what it was. How are you doing? <laughs> hey, it's good to see you. I'm great. How are you? Long time no see. You too. <laughs> Long time ago. Oh, hopefully hi, you hi, can everybody. see some of the people. Yeah, hopefully you can see some of the people. Anybody you yeah. know, feel free to give them a shout out. Got a bunch of people coming in. Aww. I give them a few. Chelsea, uh, look like Chelsea Keen, uh, Beth, yes. of course Sylvia. He is here often. It's good to see you, my friend Sylvia. Thank you everyone for watching, supporting, subscribing, and everything else that you do uh, to keep uh, my daughters and I with this channel going here on Instagram on IGTV, which is uh, Instagram's YouTube, essentially. Uh, we appreciate everybody um, as I give everybody an opportunity to roll in. I see your wave. I wave you one back there, Sylvia. Uh, mm -hmm. So we're going to spend some time together. Um, but um, I really want to talk about your book. So I, I was debating last night. Actually, it was hard to go to sleep because I, I, I actually got stuck in my head, in my own head. How do I want to start the show? Um, I've been reading part of what you sent me. Um, very, very good. Uh, everybody, I knew I was waiting. I was waiting for the hearts. I knew they were coming. I said, if I keep talking, the hearts are going to come. And they just went across the screen. Thank you, everyone, for showing some love for my guests. I really, really like that when everybody shows love uh, to, to our guests. Uh, so I am going to hand the show over to you, which is what I normally do. Yeah, right. Whatever. Uh, we're going <laughs> to hand it over to you. We had a great show prep. Uh, I find you uh, very, very encouraging for others to learn about. Uh, so what I decided last night was this is the way I'm going to start the show. I'm about to do it right now, and I'm going to hand the show over to you. The first thing I'm going to uh, ask you is, in your moments of dealing with a, narciss a narcissist, a toxic person in your life, why was prayer so important? Why was prayer so important for you, and how did prayer help you make it through? Um, it's prayer for me is a conversation. It's a relationship, um, and it's something that I grew up learning, and but I didn't understand it or really find the connection until honestly recently <laughs> um but it's been my anchor it's been my strength it's been my foundation and so it's a part of who i am and i'm very open about that um i'm proud of that you know it's it's a personal choice and it's what works for me so moments of uh, did you have moments of isolation while you were dealing with living with a narcissist in your life oh yeah yeah a lot a lot of isolation how did um, how did you navigate your life that you had before you met them to what you were enduring while you were with them? How did you navigate from what you used to be and the way you were living? And then now you, you know, reasonably speaking, felt that this person was, you know, going to make you feel emotionally safe. But yeah. that wasn't the case, was it? No, no, not at all. Um, 
I think, you know, as a, as a child, as a teenager in my young adulthood, I, I felt at peace a lot in my life. I, I mean, my parents are incredible. They've always been mm-hmm. supportive, um, super close with my brother. I kind of, you know, I was in sports. I was in cheering. I was in dance. I was occupied. I was a good student. Um, that was my life. And I just kind of him, ho or whatever you want to call it through life. Right. You, you know, you moving through life. That was your life. That was your lifestyle. Yeah. You, you were so fine. That was normal to me. Mm-hmm. Um, dealing with um, my first narcissist, which is my oldest sister. Mm-hmm. Um, that you know, created a lot of tension, a lot of yeah. um, fear and self-doubt at a very vulnerable and young age. And so I was always the peacemaker. I was always the right, people right. pleaser. I was always trying to make sure everybody else was okay and yep. not ruffle feathers. And I completely abandoned myself and lost my voice at a very early age just to not deal with the crazy um, and that carried did you get over. A, did you get a lot of crazy from your older sister? Oh yeah, oh yeah. You, and you, where are you in the in the chain of siblings? Then are you the youngest or middle child? I'm the middle. I'm the middle. You're the middle child. Yeah, mm-hmm. uh, you make me laugh because I just did a show prep with somebody, and they're the middle child, and they were saying exactly what you're saying right now. Uh, yeah. But uh, I've heard it also from the youngest as well. I've heard it from a number of different people. Um, that these things can happen. And that often is the first time some people have mentioned to me in just doing this for a year uh, with my daughters, um, that that's the first time they recognized they dealt with a narcissist was in the family, but it wasn't Mm -hmm. mom and dad. It was a sibling. Yeah. Yeah, Yeah. I've, I've been hearing that more often now that we're going into our second year that more people are finding out that it was a sibling that proved to be more of a narcissist to them than their parents. Um, how did you, I got to go to that one first before we ever get to the book. I just got, I got to yeah. ask him before you get to the other relationship, because I've never discussed this on a show. You mentioned a sibling. So what advice would you give to someone? Cause you know, you're walking around trying to keep the peace with your sibling thinking that this is the dynamics that is normal, but in actuality you were dealing with someone who didn't have your emotional best interest. Yeah. Um, honestly, I knew intuitively, because I have a pretty strong spirit, <laughs> that okay. it wasn't normal. It wasn't normal. Something was off. Something was off and you knew it. Yeah. I mean, even when I was three years old, she wasn't normal. Um, oh. So it's been my whole life. And I have very crystal clear memories of certain things that happened that was heartbreaking to me because I couldn't understand how somebody could just be so cruel, even as a a small child, you know? And so I learned to self-soothe. I learned to avoid. I learned to play her games. I learned to Uh. not speak up for myself and not, not to give her more ammunition to keep going at me because it hurt me. So it was deflected and I picked up those patterns and that yeah. brainwashing yeah. as a little baby. So, so you, you're thrown in survival mode at this young age within the dynamics of your family with your sibling, but your relationship with your parents was nothing like that is what you're saying. No, no. So, yeah. so, so no. you're, you're living in this, in this good environment, minding your own business, trying to enjoy life, but you were in survival mode when you dealt with her. And now you've yeah. developed that whole pattern. I, I, I find it interesting. I, I can't do it now because I can't play it back, but I'm just going to try to remember some of the things you just said. You just mentioned that you tried to deflect. You tried to avoid. Uh, mm-hmm. You essentially made yourself small or almost invisible so that you could avoid conflict or not have somebody punish you or lash out at you. Yeah, I did. And wow. I've done it my whole life because wow. I hate conflict. I hate anger. Yeah. I don't respond to it. And I was very much until two and a half years ago, I was still a five-year-old little girl inside. And when people raise their voice or attack me for whatever reason, yeah, you do this, you know? 
So I'm 40 years old this year. Stop you it. Know? Stop it. You're yeah. not supposed to do that on this show now. I really feel old. <laughs> I don't care. I am Even the, hey, I am who I everybody, am. <laughs> she looked like she's like 22, 23. Now I feel 90. Oh, no. Listen, Thanks, what Mama. you have what you have right now is is uh you have a book out mm -hmm. you have a life now that you able you're able to look back at the people that you've dealt with that didn't have your best interest and you recognize they weren't trying to make you better and build with you they were trying to hold you in place or bring you down mm -hmm. or shame you yeah yeah how, how did that carry over from what you dealt with, with your sibling and that dynamics and how you started to live your life to a romantic relationship? Um, I've dated many douchebags. Can we say that on here? <laughs> as long as you don't say their name and I don't get sued, yeah. <laughs> awesome. I don't get a cease and desist. You can say, yeah. say whatever. It's a family show, but right now I, I, don't, have a, I don't have a button to, to beep that out. I'm working on it, but go right ahead. <laughs> There's not a more per appropriate title for them, but I, I've had... So obviously, so obviously, since you said that, you're over them is what you're saying. Is that what you're saying? Oh, totally. <laughs> you're totally All done with them. them. Okay. Just checking. Yes. Just checking. All right. Single's my new superpower. <laughs> Single. Oh. <laughs> hey, you need to hashtag a shirt that. You need to make a shirt that says that. Single's your new yeah. superpower. Okay, go ahead. Yes. Um, I would say, I mean, I had um, not very many relationships growing up. Um, the people I dated, you know, my first real boyfriend was in eighth grade and you know that was hold that hands way, in the hall you were and pop kiss <laughs> eighth grade i like you did the air quote now now i want to know his name so we can go find out where he is today <laughs> no just keep going go ahead he's eighth still grade my friend and he's, cool. he's still your friend okay. he's actually great he is he's a good okay. dude um but i just i i didn't date a lot and the long-term relationships that I had all except for one were um, nothing spectacular or they just were not my people. Um, yeah, right. It was a lesson. Everything's a lesson, right? right? You learn, mm -hmm. you grow. Yep. If you're not learning or growing, you're dying. Um, yep. But it did help me figure out me with each relationship. But at the same time, when you're a teenager and a preteen, you're changing every year. Yeah. So nothing. Every 30, sticks. every 30 seconds you're changing. So it doesn't, you're yeah. changing every moment. Yeah. What did you learn about yourself through these elements and experiences of life that you went through? What did you learn about yourself along the way? Even from the eighth grade experience I on. Learned what did you what I did you learn about yourself? Too much crap from people. <laughs> I do. Uh, I, I love the way you express yourself. <laughs> Make me yeah. laugh. Okay, <laughs> but why did you? Did you figure out why you put up with too much of that foolishness? I, you know, it again, like it took me until I started really doing my work two years ago to okay. All right. for it to be like clean. Yeah. So, um, I have had a healthy relationship, um, which thank you, Jesus was the man I married and had a child with okay. and he's still my best friend today. But I do want, I do want to clarify something. You have a healthy relationship for those of you who don't know. Uh, she wasn't saying that she married a guy named Jesus, but she was giving, <laughs> a, I just want to, cause it could sound like it ran together. It was no period. It sounded like, <laughs> I just want to. <laughs> I just, I'm sorry. It's my first show, first show back. I'm being goofy. All right. So uh, I got to tell you this before we keep going. Uh, so you do have a healthy relationship. It is with Jesus as well as uh, who you have in your life now. But what I was going to say, uh, uh, you didn't know this was going to happen today. All right. So uh, on the, uh, oh my goodness. I'm sorry. I'm reading on the screen what I'm about to read to you, but it makes me laugh before I read it. The, uh, it. the, pa the pack coach says to you, you look 21, and she gives you four hearts, by the way. I just wanted to tell you that. And, uh, of course, a lot of people have uh, given you a hello. Uh, we are going to get to the book, everybody, so just in case you're wondering, we're going to talk about that in a minute. Uh, what, cream, what cream do you use? You look amazing. That comes from uh, my friend Anne, uh, beautiful uh, Anne from Ireland. Uh, Anne Crosby is giving you some prop, prop there. And uh, Shay Shay, uh, 317 Shay, <laughs> she says, 
while you look amazing and she gives you three hearts as well and you've been getting a number of hearts across the screen as we've been going here uh thank you everyone for being here uh, and spending thank time you. with us this is free tv and uh we are back on the air today and trisha is uh the first person i get to uh torture today i mean uh to ha- excuse me how did that come out to have as a guest today but I do want to turn to something, and if you don't mind, there were dark moments uh, that that happened in your life emotionally in dealing with a narcissist. Mm-hmm. Let's get into that a little bit more. Um, okay. You've given us a little pretty good background of, of, of how, you know, your upbringing. But do you have a copy of your book with you? I couldn't remember. I don't, I didn't remember. Oh, you do. I am. I was going, I forgot. So can you hold it up closer to the screen and hold it for a few seconds so everyone can see it? Back it up just a wee bit right in there. That's perfect, right there. So everyone, take a look at the screen. Feel free to uh, screenshot that if you're able to do so because we want you to make sure to grab a copy. And if uh, you get a copy, uh, feel free to get one for your friend uh, who may be struggling with a knucklehead or a toxic person or a narcissist. Um, tell us about this book and the dark times that you've experienced, uh, Trisha, when it came to dealing with a narcissist? Um, yeah, so I met, uh, I refer to my, uh, honestly, I'm uh, not even uh, claiming. Uh, I'm not wait, hold claiming on a second. Wait, hold, yeah, I was going to say, don't, don't claim me. Yeah, don't claim me. I, I need a button but, for that. So, no, don't claim yeah. me. Yeah. Go ahead. Yeah. Uh, Watch your words because your body's listening. Yeah, he's not my anything anymore. He ain't my problem. Um, don't, don't let it out, Trisha. Don't let it out yet. Wait till after the show. Then you can let it out. Reel that in. Okay. Reel yeah, reel, that, reel um, that in for a moment. <laughs> children, children may be watching. Children may be watching. Yeah. Go ahead. So Dr. Jekyll uh, was the person I was in a relationship with. Uh, some of the dark things we went through, uh, everything. Uh, of course, there's... <laughs> The mirroring and the love bombing yeah. and the future faking where you think you're on cloud nine and found your soulmate. Um, but throughout all that was pathological che- uh, lying to me, cheating, uh, mm-hmm. his drug abuse and lying about that and putting my son and I in unsafe situations so that he could continue using drugs. Um, he also... Um, got me pregnant and I was forced to have an abortion and that was really difficult. Um, he never hit me or punched me, but you know, I don't want to say this without, you know, you know, I don't want it to sound like one's worse than the other cause they're all abuse is terrible, but absolutely. I would have, I would have rather him punched me in the face than what he did because mm. a bruise heals quicker, but the psychological, emotional, mental torture that you go through with narcissists is, I mean, if you could see the bruises under my skin and on my brain, you wouldn't recognize mm. me. Wow. So, um, Annie, the cream is monate girlfriend. <laughs> we All right, you We you, don't have it in Ireland yet, but I could hook you up. We I'm going to say you're going to have to become the distributor uh and, and ship that to her. Uh Anne will love that. Uh and she mm-hmm. she's giving you her her uh her cream uh info uh that she uses. Um I didn't see that coming for the show today. Uh, thank you very much. You need you, you need to uh become a distributor now. Um what I, I was going to I actually am. Oh, you are. Oh. <laughs> there we go. There it is, everybody. She's a distributor. Okay, so when it comes to you talking about what you've experienced, I know you wrote the book. Mm-hmm. Is it challenging for you to talk about it now that you're happy? Um, yeah, it is because I'm human and okay. I'm not disordered and I have intense love and empathy and compassion. Yeah. And I hold all those things for myself and for other victims and survivors, which is why I wrote this book. Um, Because it's, it's the hardest thing I've ever gone through in my life. Um, And it's not 
something that heals quickly. I mean, I'm not even a year out. Wow. I've been out. It'll be 11 months next Tuesday. No. Yeah, next Tuesday. 11 next months. Next Tuesday. It'll be 11 months. When, yeah. when, when you were in the difficult situation, horrific, emotionally horrific situation that you were dealing with, how, how was the support that you received? Was it minimal? Did people understand you? Was it difficult? Was it challenging? The reason I ask that is because of what's on the screen. I'm, I'm looking at it right now. I'm going to look over here. Yeah. Uh, somebody wrote this, and I'm, I'm going to... I'm going to let you answer that question there, but uh, NPD Recovery Red Flags, she wrote this. I tried to explain to someone today that people cannot see the damage a narc does. So what kind of support did you get? Was it hard to explain it to others? Yeah, it's, it's infuriating and it's invalidating. It's re-victimizing. It's, it's exhausting because yeah. your brain your entire central nervous system has been hijacked to the point where you can't even explain it because it's so screwed up and just all over the place. You, you lose your words. Like you, wow. you lose your voice. You lose your words when you try to defend yourself by the time you're explaining like in a, one of the millions of circle conversations and arguments you get with these people, when you're trying to defend yourself on point number one, they're falsely accusing you of, they're already on number five and your yeah. brain can't catch up and you're being constantly just inundated and fired at by them, intimidated, screamed at, yelled, things thrown at you, stomping around, making threats that you are in fight or flight and your brain shuts off because all the blood in your body is going to your muscles and organs for that you're in danger instinct yeah, yeah. and you need to leave. But this is your home. This right. is your fiance. You know, mm -hmm. this is your husband or your parent or uncle Joe or whoever right, the right. abuser is, you know, and it doesn't matter what age you are you you can't it feels like you're a prisoner in your own body and it's terrifying and your feelings don't matter they don't care it's your fault you know so it's it's that constantly that you start losing faith in yourself uh, mm -hmm. your self-worth your self-esteem and you just start taking on everything they say about you, you know, and their whole gaslighting, crazy making, because that's what it is. It's crazy making. You start accepting it as fact because your body no longer knows how to protect you. And mm -hmm. so when you try to have those conversations with people, it's super, super, super important. And that's why I love and appreciate like shows like yours, um, Narc Talk, yeah. you know, having the ability to get on YouTube and find vetted clinicians that work with these kind of people. Like it's super important mm -hmm. because you have to be very careful who you share with because mm -hmm. the people that don't get it and say, get over it or Ooh. why don't you just leave? it it is defeating it's defeating and i've had to deal with that plenty of times and all i did was come home and go back to bed because i felt like i had no energy to even function yeah so to let, so did you find yourself not even having energy from what you're describing it sounds like you had no energy then to even defend yourself to rightly defend yourself there wasn't yeah. even energy to do that because you weren't just defending yourself with the troublemaker in your house, but you're trying to defend yourself to the lies that they spread and trying to explain it to other people. That's exhausting. Mm -hmm. Like you said, that's, it is. It's never ending. And that's, that's another thing, you know, the smear campaigns, you know, all these coin terms, 
they're already out telling everybody you're insane and that you've lost your mind or you've gone crazy and that you're the abuser. So when you try to defend yourself, especially if they've been working on you for weeks and days and that constant just beat you down, the, the idiot I was with, we would go to a function that was all his work family and friends and people I, that aren't my people that I didn't know. And he would constantly dose me the whole week, all the way up until we were in the car on the way to the event until I would snap and just react. And it was crying. It was, I didn't want to be near him because he's just happy. Great. Go he's lucky. Fine, blah, blah, blah. I don't know why I'm she's, she's apart. yeah. But that's what they want. That's more supply for them so that I look like I've lost my mind. And he can go, see, this is what I'm talking about. He did always you, wanted to tell everybody how I reacted, but he never wants anybody to know what he did. Yeah. You, you don't want to talk about the first blow. He wants to talk about how you reacted to how he hit you mm -hmm. emotional, how he hit you emotionally. Yeah. Um, what was it like, if, if you don't mind telling us, what was it like trying to explain this to your your mom or your dad or your family at what point did this become either they approach you or you approach them at what point was this a discussion that was brought up in the family um so in 2016 um things were super bad between the idiot and i and i had started looking into narcissism um because of a text message he shared with me that his wife sent his ex-wife sent him. And I was like, I knew the word, but I never knew it was a disorder. I didn't know the okay. whole spectrum of it. You know, it. I thought I figured a narcissist was like somebody who thinks they're awesome, you know, and they're not yeah. all that, but they're just like, you know, look, look in the mirror, look in the mirror all day person. kind of a thing. Yeah. 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 Which, you know, is my sister. But anyway, um, <laughs> So, <laughs> you're the best okay go Andrew. ahead go ahead so, I was actually um buying Christmas presents for people and I was in Barnes and Noble and I was on the phone with a friend and I just turned and looked and looked at the bottom of the aisle and there was this book called why does he do that oh really never heard of it and why did he why does he do that is that what you said okay you. go ahead <laughs> oh you don't tell you got it oh you're the best Boom. But a little bit, wait, a little bit lower, a little bit lower, right there, right there. So everybody can see that again. Take a screenshot. Why does he do that? Maybe some of you already know it, uh, but we'll have to take a look at it. Tell us who's the author, by the way, if you can tell us. So I reference this book in my in my book as well. Um, it's by Lundy Bancroft. He just came out with a new book too, and I know we're here talking okay. about mine, but I'm no. Go like, ahead, go ahead. This was my Bible. Really? Yeah. Okay. Um, this is actually. Did you buy? You bought it that day. I did had. you buy it? Did you buy it that day? You did. I bought it that day, just off the title, and then you know the subtitles inside the minds of angry and controlling men, and I was like, huh, and started flipping. <laughs> light bulb. It was the light bulb moment. You were like, I mean, I'll just show you. Like, okay. I highlighted oh man, and made notes look at you. Of everything I experienced. You bathe yourself in that book. Yeah. Wow. This was my life. This was yeah. my life. And this soon, is my second copy. As soon as you got the book, what yeah. started to happen inside of you and in your relationship? What started to happen once you got that book? So I started realizing that it wasn't me. I'm not wow. crazy. This wow. is what I'm going through. But anytime, because I was still trauma bonded to him, I still loved him. And I still, my ego was like, I can fix this. I can love him more. Wow. You know, we can talk about this. Let's go to therapy and learn how to communicate. Big no, big no. Do not go to therapy with your abuser ever, ever. Big fat no. And make sure your therapist knows how to deal with NPD and cluster B personalities because 
if you get somebody that doesn't understand it, it again is re-victimizing and it is re-traumatizing and validating and you feel like you're going to lose your mind. Um, but, you know, I had to do some extreme work and healing to kill my ego and to wake up. It finally took me, I mean, it took me a long time to finally wake up and you, you, realize. So your, your ego was in the way? You're, you're saying your ego was in the way? Yeah. And, and, and you I couldn't realize, you couldn't, you're the people pleaser, your ego's in the way. So you couldn't realize what? What is it that you didn't realize that the ego was blocking? I thought, because again, how I grew up in my programming, I thought I could love him more. I could be more <laughs> empathetic. Mm -hmm. I could lovingly help show him the love I needed, which I, I did all those things. It didn't matter. It didn't matter. He was a mirror. He is an Oscar worthy performer. He <laughs> faked it. Uh, and he'd be a dream come true in the love bomb again for a week and a half, two weeks tops historically. And then it was like, <sighs> so it was did he constant. Get, did you feel him getting worse over time? Yeah. Did you feel him? Did you literally feel his presence every time you got around him getting yes, more I contemptible, did. contemptible and angry with you? Yeah, absolutely. And it was my fault. I was always bringing up the past. I'm like, no, it's not the past. It's the present that I'm still dealing with that hasn't changed. That's why yeah. this keeps coming up. But I'm crazy. And that's not what happened. That's not what he said. You know, just gaslight, 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 gaslight. Over and over and over. Now, now over I, have to, I have to tell you, uh, you, you sparked a, a huge conversation. And I'm going to attempt to catch up, everybody. I see you there. Everybody's talking as you're, as you're explaining to us what you've experienced. Many people are agreeing with you. Uh, someone uh, highlights to us that they tried to explain to someone uh, concerning what a narc does. We talked about that. But some people think that you are a hypochondriac when you try to explain you have PTSD from a relationship, uh, is what the uh, NPD Recovery Red Flag says, uh, and says it goes on behind closed doors. That's pretty much what you're describing. Yeah. What he was when he got out of the car is not the same person that was giving you a hard time and berating you all the way up to the event. Completely. Constant yeah. gaslighting is what's here on the screen as well. They're saying in the chat. It, it, it also takes time uh, to process new information from people um, mm -hmm. is what someone experienced. Just trying to interact yeah. with other people because you're dealing with a crazy person behind closed doors. Um, You're right. Shay, Shay Shay says the healing work journey doesn't end. She says that she's five years out after 12 years, but my daughter chose to live with her dad, the narc, uh, is what she highlights. It can be challenging if family members are still duped, uh, uh, <laughs> hoodwinked, and tricked by these yeah. uh, Oscar, would you say Oscar-winning performance actors? Uh, I smile because I think it's pathetic. I'm not smiling because I agree. I think it's really pathetic because I have to tell you what the rest of them say. Uh, it's Ebony Juling, uh, Juling says, I am in the right place now. Very numb and confused uh, about who I am is what she's saying. But evidently she's away from the narc. Uh, it's super Good. important to find to find people that understand she is on point. They're talking about you. They're talking about you right now. Uh, on point. Uh, and they're mentioning, a lot of people are mentioning that they have a lot of things in common with what you're saying. That's the yeah. sad part about this. It's not yeah. like these are like a few men or women that are spread out. Mm -mm. And, and with, with the audience that watches the show here, I was just, I think I mentioned it to you too. And uh, recently been finding out that our, our audience is, is, the age is dropping. It used to be from 35 to 80. And now it's yeah. from like 16 and their stories are horrific the way they're being yeah. treated in, in the young men that they're, you know, looking to date or they get older and they're going to get married. Mm -hmm. What was it about him? If you had to say that he showed really well, that, that made him seem like he would be a good partner. What was it about him that was fake that he did so well 
that was so charismatic or whatever it may be, what would you say it is for if there is some young woman between the ages of 16 and 30 that's listening? Go ahead. Um, I would say his ability to fake empathy and to connect wow. with people. It was so convincing uh -oh. that it's, and this is why I'm, I'm convinced like they're just demons in human skin. They are not normal. <laughs> Uh, a lot because, of people agree with you, agree with you on that, but go ahead. First of all, he's a chiropractor. So I had a he, feeling you were going to say doctor or lawyer, but but you said a chiropractor. That's, so he gets to yeah. well. So he gets to yeah. put his hands all over uh, yeah, I know all yeah. day long, yeah. which yeah. is yeah. why most of the women he cheated on me with were his patients. Patients. Um, yeah. But you know, it's that. Oh, I want you to feel good. I want to make you better. Blah, blah, blah. And he loved to tell everybody, I'm a doctor. You're not a freaking doctor. <laughs> I mean, I love <laughs> chiropractic way before I met this moron. You know, that is something that my family has done. Well, my family, my son and my son's dad, <laughs> that's part of our longevity and our overall health. Like going, I to a do going to a chiropractor all day long over Western medicine. I don't even like taking Advil unless I absolutely have to. Like I am a very much nature girl. Yes. I bathe. Obviously I take care of myself, <laughs> but I like to, I never knew we were going to get to that point in the show. I, I like never knew clean. from I the like show prep. I never body. knew you would bring up that you bathe. So thank you for bringing that up because I you know do. we never we never know when this show when COVID's released. I'm going to look to try to do more of these shows in person. So I'm going to keep that in I'm going to keep that in mind that you bathe. Uh, I'll make sure to do the same before we actually do a live show in person. Uh, yeah. So, yeah. so that's very important information. Thank you. Okay, I got to keep reading you what's going on on the screen because it keeps going. Um, Somebody is highlighting, oh, that's Ebony. Ebony Jewel is highlighting, I was suggested this book. It's a revelation. I believe she's talking about the book you held up. Uh, I don't know y'all existed. I was going crazy. Uh, she says, I can relate to so much of this. Uh, that's coming from, from Sam uh, here. A number of people are highlighting that they recognize what you're talking about. I, I have to mention something that someone is highlighting here. They said, I just sat there as he yelled crying yelled and she was crying and he called the silence as submissive and that it was good to take it that it was good for her to just sit there and take his yelling oh. Oh. Uh, as a father of daughters i just find all of this fascinatingly disgusting technically it's interesting go ahead you're gonna say all right um i wanted to and then i'll get back to your point i wanted to say something to ebony um I'm so yeah. glad you're out, honey. And I know you said you're numb and you don't know who you are. That's a beautiful place to start and start building yourself up. Start planting seeds. Do your soul searching. Get out in nature and reconnect to you. Um, there might be something from your childhood, which I feel like a lot of this stuff stems from because it is conditioning. Yeah. yeah. Um, and it doesn't happen over. Of, it doesn't happen overnight is what you're saying. It, no. I mean. Okay. I'm not a stupid woman. None of these people no. are stupid. None I of these agree. victims are stupid. They're smart. They're loving. They're loyal. Mm -hmm. They're good people, which is why you're a delicious dessert for these nut jobs. Wow. So don't let them steal that beauty from you. Who you are and who you were created to be is beautiful. It's a beautiful thing. Don't let them take that from you. So I, I, I just want to say, Ebony, honey, Start there, plant some seeds, find you, yep. go look for some hobbies, yep. things that build you up, that make you feel grounded and like you're getting your power back or something that you're interested in, you want to try and just see where it goes. Just, you know, have a consistent routine to find your spark again. Yeah, so, absolutely. Okay. I agree with that a thousand percent. Yeah. And, and, and Ebony mentions that, uh, well, uh, hot, cold, hot, cold. It, yeah. That's kind of what you just described. It's like yeah. hot, cold, hot, cold, but on purpose. It's not like, you know, he stubbed his toe or had a car accident and came home and something happened. 
They're deliberately yeah. looking to manipulate, well, in your case, your emotion for yeah. the worst, not to make and you feel safe. And they do it all day. They do it yeah, all day that's what, It's amazing how much energy they have to do that mm -hmm. all day with people. Um, yeah. uh, I got to read to you some more that's here. Um, others are highlighting, yes, that there are Oscar winners. <laughs> Uh, and others are, are talking about uh, the hot code, as you highlighted. The pack coach says um, it's more the question of what is it uh, in you, or in other words, in you, I guess that's what she's saying, what we need, uh, that is what we attract. So we need to focus on essentially who we are. Like you're saying, uh, our, get her sparkle back. When she mm -hmm. focuses on herself, then it's pretty pretty good chance once you started working on yourself, in looking at your conditioning, you were able to see more that that person wasn't working for you. Yeah. That person was actually out to hurt you. But yet, but yet you were with him. This is what I get challenged about a lot. Um, when people come on the show, um, they feel the challenge within themselves. And I don't know what to say to them. Maybe you can say. Sometimes people beat themselves up just on what I just said. And they will yeah. hone in on that. Wait, they can get friends that will tell them the same thing. Well, you know, you chose them. Okay. And before you know it, they're beating themselves and gaslighting themselves up over and over instead of picking themselves up that these people were disordered troublemakers on a mission. Mm -hmm. yeah. Any words of encouragement if a person is trying to kick themselves over and over or their friends telling them, but you chose them. You married them. Yeah. Yeah. Here's, here's the thing. We all have choices. And yeah, sometimes we make the wrong one. And it sucks. And it hurts. And you learn a lesson. But with these types of relationships, the person you fell in love with and got connected to and poured into does not exist. Yeah. So... It's called cognitive dissonance. Your brain and your heart do not line up because you see and feel how they treat you, but your heart is still battling with you saying, yeah, yeah but he's this and we've done this or she, yeah. and we've shared this. Mm -hmm. Like, how can this be complete polar opposite? And that's, what's frustrating talking to people because they're like, well, you chose it. Why didn't you just leave? Yep. yep. You know? Yep. And it's like, I don't know. I can't answer that. <laughs> yeah. And that's what's so annoying and why it's so, so important to be careful who you share with because yeah. we can't explain it until you are out of it and you get miles away from it. Yeah, like, yeah. It's like, you know, a water tower you pass on the road and you can still see it from miles away. But when it was once huge and massive towering over yeah. you, it gets this big and then this big yeah. and then this big, get away from it. That means yeah. they're mutual friends. They're flying monkeys. Their family got to go. Bye-bye. Yeah. They don't need to have any information about you they don't need to have any connection. And I know it's hard and it sucks and it's not fair. But if you want to heal, stop looking at their social media. Stop asking friends what they're doing. Who mm -hmm. cares? Because you know it's BS. It's all a lie. Focus on you. All the garbage and time and effort and energy you poured into them, flip it around and put it all back yep. in you. Absolutely. And, I mean, I... Listen, I love, I was watching one of your interviews you did um, a while I'm back. Sorry to, I'm sorry to hear that. I'm sorry. To, oh. <laughs> no, Go ahead. No, no, you have incredible people on your show. I love it. Um, you had a professor, Sam. Vaknin. Uh, mm -hmm. Vaknin, yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, so here's my, here's my thing with that. So the, the self-aware narcissist and the... HG tutor and stuff like that. Like I get, it is fascinating, but it's also infuriating. Let me explain. So I went through that and they can sit there and talk about their perspective and what they're doing. And it's like, this is what I do mm -hmm. and it works and I don't care. 
and blah. And it's interesting to get their perspective to be like, yeah, that's what that was. Yeah, I'm not crazy. It is validating to you, but it's also re-traumatizing to sit there mm-hmm. and listen to it and to see their reaction like, I don't care, works for me. And people watch that stuff that are victims and survivors, you know, and it, it throws you back into being a victim. I don't want to be a victim. I want to be a victor. I want to move on with my life. This mm-hmm. is not a part of my identity. It's a part of what I went through, but it's not who I am. You know, I am so many more things than a victim of my, you know, the dude I was with. So I don't want to ruminate in it. And I think it's important that people, you know, get on YouTube and get on different media platforms to understand the, the cycle and the terminology so that you can see, okay, I'm not crazy. You know, that's validating. Narc talk is incredible. Those men and women on there that have survived and Mm -hmm. are preaching about it, Mm -hmm. they're awesome. I love them. But you got to get a new routine. You got to protect your peace. You got to move forward. You can't stay in that mindset and that headspace because it's not serving you. It's not helping you. It's keeping you down. And you know what a narcissist loves? seeing you fail Mm -hmm. (laughs) so it's it's the most insidious abuse that there is and they don't care and you're over here heartbroken and your life is in shambles and they're like ha ha on to the next like people are like supporting these people you know these self-aware narcissists there's another one on narc tv and i or not narc tv sorry that's you on um Narc talk. No, no. I refuse Narc to talk. follow yeah. him. I refuse to follow him because he loves all these people watching. I know what him you're saying. And he's getting paid. And yeah. that's what he I'm like, why are you giving power and approval and appreciation to somebody that is causing you pain? Before you, know? you became, before you got on this journey where you are right now and you were able to get to the book. I know everybody, I am going to bring up the book, but I, I find this fascinating just to listen to you. Um, what was it? I really, I'm going to ask you something right now and I'm asking for people who are just beginning the journey. So just kind of keep that in mind as you go to, mm-hmm. to give us some encouraging answer. There are people who are on a journey and they have no idea. They didn't, they haven't found the book yet at Barnes and Noble. They, they're just trying to make sense of this, still thinking that it's them. So just, mm-hmm. just as you answer, just think about they're really thinking it's them because they've been conditioned and patterned like you highlighted to us from somewhere, mm-hmm. somewhere in their past. It could have been mom, dad, whatever, uncle. It could have been a number of things. It could have been they were molested. It could have been a number of issues, abandonment, whatever. What would you say to them when you when you think about things that you've experienced with your sister, things that you've experienced in quote unquote romantic relationships that were really, really Mm one-sided. You were emptying yourself into a a broken vessel. What would you say to them so that they can have a sense of hope? Because these are stages that they have to go through, right? This is not, they may be thinking, Oh, I just, I just read this and and then I'm going to, I'm going to go apply this and I can fix him. But they need to deal with a taste of, well, some medicine on a spoon that's not going to go down too well, but it is going to maybe make them better. What would you say to them on their beginning of this journey of getting free? Okay. So this, this is how I approached it and what I suggest. And I want to, I want to be, I want to be careful with my words here and how I say this. Um, I will say my intention is um, to be loving and I have so much compassion, so much compassion, but I want to be firm. And this is the hardest thing, but it is absolutely necessary. You have to look at yourself. 
and it's it's not it's not your fault it's not your fault it is not your responsibility to fix or heal anybody else the only person you are responsible for is yourself so whatever it is that is causing you to stay in it stay mm -hmm. a victim to it and not move forward you hold the keys to that answer and there is nobody on the planet that is going to fix it for you or rescue you you have to be your own hero and it is the hardest freaking step that there is but you have have to unearth it and dig and find it and what that looks like for others i don't yeah. know yeah. i'm me i mean yeah. you can buy my book and read my journey mm -hmm. i was wildly extreme in how i went about my healing but it's who i am it's my soul it's my life it's my upbringing it's my ancestor it's you know it's authentic to me I don't know what that is for other people, but I, I mean, just take some accountability. It's not your fault. The abuse is not your fault. The circumstances are not your fault, but we do have a choice and you either stay or you go and no, it's not easy. It's not going to be comfortable. And I battled this for so long and my shaman I was working with, was a lot more firm with me and saying these things to me. And I would say, well, I can't leave. I don't have a job. It's COVID. I lost my job. I have no money. He's like, that's an excuse. And I'm like, it's not an excuse. It's a valid reason. No, it's not. You can find money. Like I had such a lack mentality. I was so codependent. I was terrified and not because I loved him still, not because I wanted to be there. I was crippled. And it's because I didn't believe in myself because mm -hmm. I took on all this abuse. Sometimes you just got to freaking jump ship. No, you're not going to have the same house. Um, I slept in my car at a marina with mm -hmm. two cats. Mm -hmm. That was hell of a lot better than in the house with him. I slept. <laughs> You, you are not the first person I've heard say that in this past year. I've heard so many yeah. people come on and say, yeah, you know, I, I slept in the car. I slept over here. I was in my van. And they were like, yeah. that was some of the best sleep I had. They were like, and I was, was going like, seriously? And I'm like, I yeah, they were like, I had one blanket and I was freezing, but I was knocked out. I didn't, you know, go ahead. You were saying? Yeah. I mean, I, it wasn't a picnic. I mean, it wasn't a vacation. No, no, no. I get what you're saying. But right. I was in my car. I was safe. I was by the marina. I could roll down the window and listen to the ocean. I had my music. I had my journal. I had my Bible. I had my pets. I had me. And that's who I needed the most. Me. I needed me back. copy uh if we have any trouble here i may just come you got me back i think you got yeah, me back got right back. yeah you okay you got got me back there for a second i'm doing okay. something here just bear with me i am sure. highlighting to everybody your book i was just going to throw that in since i was frozen there for a minute the book is entitled please correct me if i get this wrong here i'm you know what i'm looking at what you sent me misaligned mind right there we go thank you for hold it hold that there just for a second misaligned The abuse is uh, uh, from Trisha there. Everybody, hopefully we're still there. Can you still hear me? Yeah, I can hear you. Okay. So I'm going to, everybody, um, let's do this. Take a listen to this. I'm going to read something to you as I scroll down here. We have gone 56 
No. Got you back. Second. Okay, hold on. Yeah. There we go. We're all good together. We're going to be back here for a second. I'm going to read something. Hopefully you can hear me. And uh, um, just, uh, just throw out a word every now and then. That way I know I'm not frozen as I'm reading this. Uh, so it, you wrote this. You said, finally, having quiet time for myself without dealing. Okay, so this is what we're going to do. You still there? You there? Dun, 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 dun. Yep. Okay, so uh, you're still there. Uh, you were writing in the book that you had a moment to yourself without Dr. Jekyll's uh, drunken outburst, uh, his cocaine and screaming matches. I actually slept like a dream for the first time in years is what you write. My nervous mm -hmm. system took a while to realize that I was no longer anywhere near Dr. Jekyll's toxic energy or environment. That's what you experienced by being in the marina. This is out of your book uh, is what you wrote. People need to find their marina is what I Absolutely. get from your story. They need to find what works for them so they can get back to your words were you got back to to you or in other words you said i got back to me mm -hmm. that was not easy but it is what got you to where you are today right yep 100 percent. that's why you are where you are today but if somebody has a hard time finding me i'm going to circle back to how we started this show it may not apply to them but they may need to keep it in mind as everybody knows, my show is very neutral, but that doesn't mean I don't have an opinion. But some people who are inclined to may need to do what? Pray. So if that, if that is something you feel you need to do, and you feel inclined to do so, feel free to do so. Uh, whatever you need to do to find your serenity and tranquility, and I'm, I just read it to get away from his toxic energy and environment. If you are in a toxic energy force field, <laughs> I'm going to go <laughs> space cadet on you here, or, or, in, or, in matrix, or environment, please consider the misaligned mind, the book from Tracy, uh, Tracy uh, from Trisha. I don't know. <laughs> you know what? First show Who back. Who are you talking to? <clears throat> I don't know. First show back. And now we've gone 58 minutes and my voice is actually going. I can tell this is my first show back. Um, you have done really well, but I can't let you go. Too many people are writing things uh, and they're all still here. Uh, most, if not awesome. most of them are still here. So I have to read it to you because yeah. uh, you need to know what people are thinking about and, and the encouragement they get from you. Um, I'm going to start right here. I got to tell you this. <laughs> oh, my goodness. You got some really interesting things people have said to you. Uh, you threw some love to Ebony. Um, Ebony says he would be so concerned. Uh, patient found all my triggers. Talking about somebody that she met. Um, she was raped and abused uh, when he found uh, her. Uh, so she, as she's essentially saying she was perfect. Uh, pray for him. Because he seemed to find all the buttons that needed to be pushed. And then, of course, he abused her, Yeah, uh, essentially, is what she's saying. I just wanted to let you know what she was highlighting about her personal life. Empaths are a target, is what Anne is saying. Uh, and, by the way, huh, Ebony is saying this to you, uh, Trisha. Thank you so much. Uh, I am crying here, is what she's mm -hmm. saying. But she appreciated what you said much earlier uh, when you were talking to her. Bumped, bruised, and blessed says... I say it over and over, the community of narcissistic abuse victims are the best people out there. I'm so grateful. Uh, she also says there's no shame in the game of being a good, decent, trusting individual. And I, I, I have emotional. to tell you, I have to tell you, she just took what I, I was going to say that about you at the end of the show. Uh, <laughs> don't say that. She's going to be emotional. She's going to make me start crying. Uh, my voice starts going up. Everybody should know, and most of you know, it means I'm going to about to cry. So uh, being a good, decent, trusting individual is what this platform is all about. This is what my daughters and I want for people yeah. to understand someone has lied to you. You are not that person. They say big, no. big, big reveal. They are not the person 
that they portrayed themselves to be, they are fakers. Well, matter of fact, somebody said that over and over. There's a whole chat yeah. that was going on here. Fake, fake fakers and Oscar winners uh, based upon what you said. Frauds, yeah. Emotionally fraudulent, uh, intellectually uh, deviant because mm -hmm. they're looking for, constantly looking for deviant ways to create havoc wherever they go. Uh, the pack coach says, we did not choose them. It was predisposed by our upbringing. And that's something that uh, I have to admit, really you, more than anybody else, has touched on that out of uh, almost uh, over 300 and some odd episodes we've done. Uh, I really would like to, to get into that some more, either with you or on another time or uh, as a show subject, that there are things that kind of set us up for people like this because we, as she says, are predisposed uh, in our upbringing. Uh, maybe a sibling, like you said. Uh, others have told me, again, like I said earlier, the same thing. It was a sibling that oh, it seemed like they groomed them uh, to really keep for themselves, but eventually you carry on some of the same behavior uh, of uh, minimizing yourself with others. Um, I'm going to run this down because this is what I do uh, so that everybody knows they're seen and heard. So bear with me and jump in any time. Don't sit there and be super miss nice person to me. Just jump, say, hold on, Paxton, I want to talk about that one. Just jump in because I've got their, <laughs> the chat still going. Uh, yeah. People need to be educated to narcissistic abuse. It's quite absolutely. complex is yeah. what Anne says. Uh, yeah. Anything on that? Yeah, absolutely. Um, big thing on that. Gabby Petito. Oh. We're all come. her. We're all her. That. It's it's nauseating and it is completely heart wrenching. Um, the cam, the body cam video of her when they got pulled over, that was me. That was me reacting. And that's exactly yeah. what she was doing. She was reacting from the dosing and the constant beat down. And she finally, and it's, I will gladly volunteer my time for free to train police officers how to recognize this and know when these victims need help. She should still be here. And my heart goes out to her family and everybody that loved her. It's, it's so frustrating because this is why I wrote this book. When are they going to start listening? When is this going to be recognized as domestic abuse? When are they going to take it seriously? It's like when somebody's killed, oh, now, okay, now we're listening. It's ridiculous. You know, I mean, the U.S. Department of Justice had a survey, and they said that more than half, more than half of abuse victims from domestic violence are murdered after they leave their abuser and most of them have a restraining order. So the most dangerous time is after you have left. And that in and itself keeps victims stuck in it because they're more vulnerable. You know, you have to make concessions sometimes of where you go. So it is scary. It's really scary. And protective orders, I mean, our whole judicial system is completely screwed up. It's disgusting. And it's not because it's turned into that. It it was created that way and it needs to be fixed. But did you did you find yourself having to get a, a restraining order? I'm just curious. I not to know your personal business, but I'm I'm throwing that out there. You don't have to answer it. Um no, I there were two times I was about to get a restraining order. I ended up not doing it, doing it because, uh, number one, I lawyered up for this book pretty intently. Um, yeah. And also, I wasn't in a place, and this is, this is the whole issue with restraining orders, especially in my state. If you take a restraining order out on, order out on somebody, they make you go to court and stand next to them. And explain why they you deserve to have one. What person who's been abused by somebody wants to go stand mm -hmm. in a room next to their abuser so that they can lie and gaslight you and paint you and smear you as this crazy person? And they're just 
just like this idiot that killed Gaddy. Like, it's not me. She's insane. You know, it's it's trauma again. They're going to put you right back in the trauma. And he um, he started stalking my son's dad and my son at their Cub Scout meetings last oh, fall. Wait, wait a minute. I'm sorry. You have to repeat that. Mm-hmm. He started stalking your son. Say it again. He started stalking my son and my son's dad, who is my son's Cub Scout leader, at their Cub Scout meetings and was bringing his son so that he could keep up with me. Wow. And my son is terrified of him. Well, I have to say this. You have uh, started a conversation here across this chat here that's just like going crazy. So I've got to, you know, what are we talking about? We're talking one hour and seven minutes. I got to tell you this, um, narcissism, and you may have seen this already on the screen. I'm going to repeat uh, something that you may have seen already. It says, narcissism is insidious. The buildup of bad behavior is slow, and the inconsistent behavior is confusing and emotionally charged. That's from the uh, power of me. Um, I also want to tell you, I want to tell you uh, what Ebony says. And and remember now, you can talk over me. The the audience, they love that. They love that. So feel free. (laughs) Uh, But I'm trying to get everybody in before we have to go. This, Ebony writes this. She says, this is so helpful. It has been two weeks since I chose to break up. It's been tough. It's been tough. And I'm so grateful uh, for this live. Oh, that's pretty neat. I'm sorry. I didn't see that coming. Uh, I am in tears here. Thank you for doing this. Uh, the pack coach says with healing, I believe you get to the point when you don't care. That's very similar to what you were just, yes. you were talking about. Uh, the pack coach uh, says that. Uh, thank you for that. Uh, Ebony also says, yes, he hated it when I got better. Did you experience that also? All the time, all the time. You know, you start implementing boundaries and boundaries are for you. They're not for them. That's where they end and you begin. That is to protect your peace. And they love to cross them and fight you on them and push your buttons and take advantage and see how far they can just beat you down and steamroll you. And so when I started getting stronger and I started setting boundaries, it's like the abuse ramped up and got harder and meaner Mm -hmm. and more, the cycles went quicker. You know, it was just like, (sighs) like you couldn't even there at the very end, he would go through the entire cycle in one day. Wow. Entire cycle. Yeah. It was like this. Just. Well, no, okay. You're, you're still with him. And he would go through the cycle in one day. You weren't like already gone. This is you're in the house with him. And he yeah. would literally go ahead. You would wake up in the morning. Go ahead. You were saying. So when I was already leaving, I broke off yeah. the engagement and I was packing uh-huh. my stuff. I had my son was already staying with his father. Um, we have 50 50 custody. And okay. I was like, he can't be here anymore. It's not safe. I'm not safe yeah. here, but I have to mm-hmm. be here right now to get our stuff. Yeah. So I was already staying in my son's bedroom just to stay away from Dr. Jekyll. And I would wake up in the morning. He'd stay out all night, boozing it up with the girl he was cheating on me with, which, by the way, my book saved her, too. She's already left and gone no contact. (laughs) I think you told me that. Yeah, I forgot Um, that. You know what? You did tell me that. mm -hmm. That is funny. But go ahead. You were saying. So mission complete. Uh, Never in a million years did I think that would happen, but God bless her. And she's precious. No wonder he liked her because she is incredible. But anyway, um, so yeah, I would wake up in the morning to get my coffee, start packing and just keep it going because I wanted out of there as soon as humanly possible. And he would have taped notes on the boxes that I had already packed. Like, and this is in my book, but it'd be like, Please don't leave without knowing that what? I love you so much. Or I'm wow. so sorry, this is where we are at. An hour later, I'd get a text message this long about what a piece of I am and how crazy. Wow. And then would he's start swinging the, from one side to the other, right? I mean, it was the whole day. I'm just like, I, I got to the point where I silenced his text messages, yeah. but I. 
I didn't want to block him just yet because I needed to know what to expect when he was coming home. So it was yeah. more for my protection. But, mm -hmm. I mean, just insanity. And then he would apologize and send an email or send a Facebook message. I'm so sorry I said that. I didn't mean that. Blah, blah, blah. And then when I didn't respond, how can you not respond to me all day? Blah, blah, You're so blah. mean. He'd come home at three in the morning. Yeah. He'd come home at three yeah. in the morning drunk, slamming the door, stomping up the steps like a toddler, and then have this crazy <laughs> conversation <laughs> argument to himself and answer himself in his bedroom. I'm hiding in the closet with domestic violence hotline because I had it lined with boxes and pillows, you know, locking all the doors. And then it'd get quiet and I'd crawl in bed like, yeah. and he'd come in the hallway and start the, <laughs> like, Oh, wow. Fake, oh my. Fake. Obviously, fake cry. Wow. I wouldn't get up because he wanted me to walk out and be like, "What's going on? Are you okay?" Yeah. I was like, "You're insane, insane." <laughs> and he'd like come and stand at my son's bedroom door and just stand there. And I'm while like, you were you while you were in feet. bed, yeah. You oh could my see goodness! His feet behind the door, and I could hear him. I'm like frozen in my son's bed. Like, please don't come in here. Please don't come in here. Please don't come in. You know, like, what is he going to do? You, you don't know. Because at that point, you're like, they have officially switched into psych psychopath mode, you know? So you, you, you have started a conversation that uh, that is going to go on well after we're done. So I'm going to tell everybody this. Please, everybody who's a regular, you know, I really mean this. And for those of you that are new. Feel free to jump on the, on, on the uh, bandwagon here. Like, comment, share, follow. Like, comment, share, follow Trisha. Trisha, yeah. how can they do that? Where can they find you? <laughs> <laughs> so I am on Instagram. Um, the name of the book is my Instagram page. It is hashtag narc, N-A-R-C, misaligned mine so that is where i post stuff about my book and do videos like these and words of encouragement and empowerment and then you can also find me on facebook at narc misaligned mine so. okay uh matthew says already am she's austin, austin. my goodness I'm I, austin. Getting, I just made up a whole new thing you know what? You're really Austin, the girl. You Austin girl. <laughs> you all don't know what that means, but you Austin, Texas Austin. girl. <laughs> okay, so uh, Matthew <laughs> reality. Matthew. <laughs> oh man, Matthew says already am. Uh, he's already following you, and she's awesome. Shay Shay says, and their accusations are their confessions. Um, yes, projection uh, pa is a confession. And yes, projection. projection. Is a confession. Say it, wait, say it again. Keep saying it. No, say, say it one more time. Their projection is a confession. Please, if so you're beginning say, your journey, remember you're cheating that. cheating on me. I know it. He's saying, I'm check cheating the, on you. Check the and box. you don't know it. <laughs> check the box. Uh, you need to hashtag that line to make it a shirt. Projection is there. What did you say? Confession? You need to hashtag yeah. that. That, sh that should be a chapter in your next book. What? Also, I want to say, Matthew Reality, you guys follow him, too, because his content okay. is fuego. And he is awesome. He's also a survivor. So all my love to you, Matthew. Thanks for your support. Okay, everybody, do 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 me a favor. Like, comment, share, follow Matthew as well. Uh, Ebony says exactly. I did not know who I would wake up to. It was so yep. confusing, is what she said. Yeah. Uh, the pack coach says, yep, yeah, this happened to me as well. Confusion. Okay, before we go, uh, we've got an hour and 15 minutes. We're going to go ahead and actually let you have your life back. Uh, yeah. The heart's... I, listen, hearts, they're loving you across the screen throughout the entire mm -hmm. show. Uh, so many, guys. so much that I have left out. Please, everybody, no, you know I love you. But uh, this chat just exploded with you on today. Um, uh, Mo the Chick says, boundaries make the narcissist come on even stronger. They become much mm -hmm. more aggressive. Um, they are mass manipulators. And says, I'm just going to run through this real quick. Uh, feel like I have been driving around for 20 years. 
with black windows now, they're, and now they're clear. Yeah. Uh, how did I get to where I needed to be? That's from April, uh, says that. she Also, she says, for you, you're amazing. And she's given Aww. some clappies Thank to you, you for that. And a, you're amazing. A whole, whole lot more. I am not going to be able to get to. This is, a, this is one of the first first time no this may be the second or third time i can say that i'm literally going to have to close down the show without getting to everybody but i love each and every one of you um all of them are uh, agreeing with each other uh, oh my god thank you is coming from ebony to you um i just wanted everybody to know we do see you here in this discussion this really is a group chat uh for everyone to get a chance to meet trisha who i yeah. found very amazing and had to get you on the show Thank, Thank you, you so much. for what you Thank did. Thank you for but having me. He, he, here we go. This is the element part where you have no idea what I was going to uh, ask you. So here oh, we go. Boy. Let me get on my, my knees. Get ready. Get ready. Three things, okay? And just say whatever pops into your head. And remember, some of the people you're talking to are either in two places. They either are just beginning their journey or they just got out of it and they're trying not to go back. Yep. So I'm going to say three things to you and just kind of, Say whatever you, uh, what do you have that pops in your head? Here we go. First one, confusion. It's a lie. Second, red flags. Listen to them. Pay attention. Third, hope. Where there is hope, there is faith. Where there's faith, miracles happen. Do not lose hope. Keep yep. moving forward. Right. If anyone needs someone to talk to, you can always find someone that you can talk to through the guests that I have on the show. Please like, comment, share, follow Trisha. If please. you can. Go ahead. No, go ahead. Please. Go ahead. Um, I'm coaching as well now. Okay. Um, so I do one-on-one -on -one with people. Um, if anybody needs help, if they need a swift loving kick in the pants, please reach out, get in my DMS. I will respond. I'm very active on there. Um, and we'll talk. So, um, if you want to email me, my email is self love recovery, nine one zero nine one zero at gmail.com. <laughs> Awesome. Awesome. Thank you so much. I'm a happy camper because I love my audience getting help from whoever uh, that is available again. to do so. Uh, listen, you will always have an open guest chair whenever you're available. And when you're not walking down the red carpet, you know, with the superstars, and you can come down to this little I'm show, you know, you know, listen, you know, okay. yeah, listen, <laughs> uh, everyone's loving it. Uh, they're okay. Seriously. I don't know how long. Let me see. That took less than three minutes that you just did. And I got a long line of over here of people that just, okay, I love you guys, but I got to go. Uh, you're, a, you're a sweetheart uh, with an Irish expression. Uh, I, that's Anne giving I you some Irish. love. Yes, I, I'm, I think. I'm Irish, Anne. Did you say that? How did they? Yeah, you're Irish now because she's telling you for sure. Uh, Matthew is getting some love. People love Matthew based upon what you said. From powerless awesome. to, uns to, Cherry Bomb says, go from powerless to unstoppable. I like that. Okay. That's and cool. uh, so proud of you. Trisha is what Cherry Mom is saying. Uh, you guys, I have to go. I love each and every one of you. They just keep typing. You <laughs> what did you do? Look what you started here. All these people. All right. We'll do it again, my friend. Take care. Stay yes, safe. Please. We'll talk Thank soon. You. Bye, everybody. You guys. See you later. Bye. Bye.